We are going to really quickly run through some things that have worked for me and for Murray State so far with growth and engagement. And then I really want to open up and hear from you all so you guys can share what's worked for you, what hasn't. We're going to hit primarily on Facebook. We're going to hit on Twitter a little bit. Um, and we'll probably touch on a couple other platforms in there um, just because of some of the topics. But that's our focus today because as we go through the registrations on campus, I'm seeing that about 90% of what we have out there is Facebook pages. Right? There's several Twitter accounts starting to pop up now too. Um, but mostly you all are doing Facebook pages across campus. So I really wanted to focus on that. Um, I believe it was Elizabeth, or was it you, that added the question about um, what can I do over like holiday breaks and things like that where there's not content that is created. So we'll kind of touch on that as well and then we'll talk about that more when we open up a little bit more. But here are some things that came to mind as I thought about um, engagement and growth. So first for Facebook growth. You know, there's a lot of things that work and don't work. It just depends on who your audiences are. It depends on uh, what they're looking for. I think I told you all last time that for Murray State at least, there is a lot of organic growth for us. So that's good for me. That makes my job a little easier because we have those affinity groups that are already looking for Murray State. So now what I'm trying to do through all of this that we're doing, the registrations and our meetings and all that, is help cross promote for you guys so that they can um, look into things that are more specific to what their interests are. So that they know there's an athletics page out there. So that they know there's a college page out there for where they graduated from or where they're at right now. So those kind of things we can all work together on. So here are some kind of things that have happened over the last couple years that have worked for us. First is to provide an incentive. And you know, we really haven't done this lately because of that organic growth. We haven't really had a need for that. And I wanted to, I don't always tell people to do this because I really think, I think we touched on this last time too, I really think that the organic growth to your page is the best. And that's because those are the people that really want to be there. They want to engage on your page. You don't want them there if they don't want to pay attention, if they don't want to engage. Because if they're there just for a prize, then they're going to take your engagement numbers down. They're going to make your page a little um, less engaging overall because the numbers will look high, but that's not always a good thing. And later on, they'll probably try to hide you in, the new, in their news feed or they'll just block you out completely. So you don't want those people. So I don't always say to provide an incentive for liking the page. However, everybody that I've worked with on campus that we've um, started a new page, uh, especially starting totally from scratch, I do say, you know, if you want to provide an incentive for people to like your page, that's great. There are great ways to do that for the right audience. So for example, RBIC is starting, I just met with Loretta not long ago. They're starting a Facebook page and a Twitter account. And so we're going to do some, or she's going to do, but I'm helping her some promoted posts and some promoted promotions of the page just to get started, get rolling, and get the right people. But it's going to be specific to the people that she knows are interested in what she has to say. So that's the kind of incentives I think that you should provide. So that's one thing to think about. And then, organized campaigns. Um, I'm preaching a lot now on social media. It's not about a post, it's about a campaign. So don't think in times of one post or one thing. Now, I still do that a lot. There are a lot of things that are very single and they're very individual. But a lot of times what I'm posting has a bigger picture kind of piece to it. So think about a hashtag campaign or a campaign around something that includes all of your platforms, includes your, um, your information um, across a, several different ways, whether you're emailing out and you're wanting to match an email or you're doing something on Twitter and you want to match your Facebook with your Twitter. You know, those kind of campaigns that are going to go over a longer period of time and not just a post and you hope to get something good out of it. So um, that's a way to actually grow your Facebook page organically. Uh, you just have people engaging with those kind of things. Um, this 
actually is, I had underneath it and I didn't go to it, but to use your page to like other people's stuff. And this is something that Trish and Elizabeth and I talked about last time too, that if you go to your page, you can actually, up in your little settings, if you're logged into Facebook, you can change to use Facebook as, and it'll give you a list of your pages. You can pick your page, and from there, you can use Facebook solely as you, as Murray State, or as whatever you are. So I've gone in, and I'll go to my news feed, which is all the pages that I've liked, which is all of you guys, and from there, I'll comment or like or, you know, just check out what all's going on on those pages. If other people see that you, Murray State or whatever you are, is liking or commenting on, they see you're active, they know you're out there, and they'll probably like you from that. So go to other pages, go to Murray State's page and like something or comment on it so that people notice that you're there and that will help um, grow your page a lot. Cross-promote. Use your other channels. So here you can see an example of on my Twitter account, I promote my Facebook page. So if I have a following there, they might be interested in my Facebook page and just not realize that I should have gone and followed the Facebook page too. So use your other channels to promote all of your channels, in other words. And then Facebook ads, promoted posts, and like promotion. This is the only thing that you'll pay for. And this is where there's three different things now. Facebook keeps changing these up, if you guys have noticed. The first one is Facebook ads, which we've all seen. On the right-hand side of your Facebook are ads. And you can buy those. You can aggregate down to the specific people that you want. And then promoted posts is something where you have a post on your page, a status update, uh, an album that you posted up and now you can see when you're on your page it'll say promote this post underneath it and under that you can click on it and it'll tell you how much you're spending you can say I want to spend ten dollars and it'll give you you're gonna see two thousand to four thousand more people because of this ten dollars so it'll tell you how much you're getting out of that money and you can change it up you can add to it you can take away from it it usually runs for a day but you can say three days of ten dollars or whatever it may be. So if you need help with any of that, please let me know and I'd be glad to help you. How, how impactful is it? I've had really good success with promoted posts. Facebook ads, e promoted posts, very, very well. So I have changed completely over to promoted posts. Now what they've just added was a like promotion. So now you can do a like promotion for your page which is different than promoted posts, but it shows up very similarly. And it's just a like our page, we're here, this is what we do. Promoted post is more of a specific thing that you want them to see, but you also want them to notice your page at the same time. So it's a little different among the three, um, but I'm getting the best results out of promoted posts. Loretta is actually gonna try the like promotion, and I'm gonna see how it goes with her for RBIC. Now she's a totally different audience, so. Um, I'm not totally sure how it's going to work, but, um, but I'm getting good for promoted posts. And I've only spent $10 at a time sometimes for that. And I, I very rarely do it, but once in a while when it's something special that I really want people to see, I'll throw a little money at it just to kind of see how it, it goes over the next couple of days. So, so that's how that works. Now, of course, that's easy money. So when you got a credit card on there and you just say, do it, you know, you start racking up real quick. So you have to be careful. But at the same time, it, it might be worth that five or ten bucks that you put there. So, let me oh, ask go ahead. Question. On the promoted post, ten bucks is that sufficient in, in your mind? I mean, if you did the ten bucks over three days or, or whatever it tells you, is that sufficient for, the, for what you were hoping for? Yes. I am getting about 3,000 more views and about 50% more interaction because of a ten dollar day if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Mm -hmm. So to me that's a success um, and if it's something specific that I really a call to action that I really want them to do like watch a video or go to something then I'm seeing that as a major success but I'm very specific about what I use it on. I don't throw it up there for a throwback Thursday or a, you know just a regular everyday post. 
I do it for the bigger things that we really want to call attention to. And I'm also seeing page likes go up on those days. So I can't totally connect those dots, but it's just too much of a coincidence to, to see um, those two days together. So, so yeah, I, I think it's well worth it, but it all depends on your audience again too. So I think you have to try it once or twice and kind of see what happens um, and then compare it to what your goals are, you know, just like anything else. Would you use that like towards an event, like um, guest speaker, you know, like uh, yes. one of the lecture series or? Yes. Um, in fact, that's what I just told Loretta to do. If she didn't want to do the like page promote, to do a promoted post, but do it for the event that she was really trying to gain attention to. Mm -hmm. So then she was kind of hitting two birds with one stone. She was getting attention for the event, but she was also getting attention for her page. So she can grow her page by growing the event, in other words. So that's where we kind of decided was a good um, investment for her, if that makes Does that answer your question? So. Okay, my last question is, does Murray say financial realm people they really balk at this? They haven't so far. We use a P card. We just put it on the P card, and that's connected to my Facebook. Just make sure you have your receipts. There is a way to go on and print every time that you're charged what it's for. And so far, everything's been great with it. So um, so I just make sure that I print those every time we get a billing. Is that connected that's to, it. The, to Dana Howard Facebook, or is that connected to Murray State Facebook? It's connected to me. Okay. Yeah. Only because I have everything through my personal account. Um, you know, you can go into Facebook and make an account with, that's not connected to you, you personally. I started from the beginning being connected personally, so I was just kind of, I've been kind of stuck in that, um, which is fine with me, but it'll, it'll probably be a problem later on. <laughs> well, let, me, let me rephrase that. Is, is there anybody else that's administrator of the page? Yes. And there, it's not connected to them, it's only for you? Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, they can, well, the credit card is actually, you can use it from any admin. So if anybody on our page does a promoted post, it will go to that credit card. Okay. Is that yeah, what you're asking? Well. Yeah. Okay. So any admin can use it. Is that okay with everybody? That's, that's a really confused, that's something I get a lot of questions on is promoted posts and, and ads. So we can always talk about that more. Um, biggest thing, market offline. Don't forget that just because social is social doesn't mean that it can't be in real life. And we talked about that a little bit last time too, that I use a lot of things like these signs I've been doing. They're just yard signs. I've been sticking, I stuck them out at Great Beginnings. And I stuck them out at Racer Homecoming. And that really helped me achieve the goals that I had for those campaigns. And I plan to do the same for commencement. Um, I actually will have these, hopefully have these, um, not this one, but another one, um, up all over campus during the week of commencement to kind of start the commencement chatter and get people excited about graduation and those kind of things. So that's kind of bringing it all into a campaign and also uh, that's just a piece of the campaigns that I've been doing for the bigger events that we have. But don't forget that you can bring it into real life. Hand out cards. You know, I have these little cards that have just our social media on them. They don't have anything about me. And that's the business card I hand out now. So that people, when I'm at conferences or wherever it may be, if I'm with a group of students, I always hand out those cards. So bring it into real life because that's the best way to grow, grow your stuff. So um, suggest a friend, something that seems so obvious, but there is a little feature on your pages that lets you suggest a friend. So if you're connected personally, you can just run through your list of friends and start inviting people to the page. So that's something that's really easy to do. It might take a little time. And now Facebook engagement. Again, campaigns. I can't stress that enough. Things like Great Beginnings. I had two pages worth of written out campaign for our social media stuff for Great Beginnings. Same thing for Homecoming. And I just literally sat and write, wrote out everything that I was going to do that was connected to hashtag Great Beginnings from the countdown on Instagram to the signs out in front of the dorms to um, anything that we were going to do to promote that program all together. So it's important that you think of every way that you can market a campaign and every way that you can put the pieces together to make it a bigger picture kind of thing. 
and it worked because my goals for that were to grow our platforms. We did buy different um, percentages across different platforms, but we did buy a lot. And a lot of the things that I was seeing was the audiences that I was going for, the parents and prospective students, and then the students who were coming in in the fall. And so I was really happy with the results for that. Trends, don't forget about trends. Things like Throwback Thursday, things that people are already doing. I've got a couple trends that I'm going to be working on over the next, the early spring. Um, one of those is going to be a, a countdown. You guys have seen these, not countdown, I'm sorry. You guys have seen these take a picture daily kind of thing where you, a lot of people are saving them on their phone as their background so that every day they know what picture to take. And you guys know what I'm talking about? And it'll say like Thursday is your favorite color. So then somebody will take an Instagram of something that's their favorite color. And so I'm going to theme it around Murray State and we're going to do one of those in the early spring. It's kind of a filler in between big events that we have. So that'll be a fun little thing for current students. Um, but Throwback Thursdays are really big for us and I think that they probably could go across campus. Um, anything that you guys have that can kind of reach into the history of your program or your, your organization or your group or whatever and use that, uh, it's a big deal and people are looking for those hashtags. So that's something that will help people engage even if they don't know you're there. Pictures and video are the biggest things that you can do. If I look at all my posts on my analytics when it shows me what type of thing my post is all the way down, my top from the, from the top to the bottom, all of my top posts with top engagement are all pictures. And so it's easy to see that that is our biggest piece that we use in all of our social media. So things like albums, letting people tag themselves. We used to be so worried, I remember this, when I was in TSM and when I was in um, alumni, we used to be so worried about writing on the picture in the album who the person was, what year they graduated, da, da, da. I don't even think about that anymore because now I ask people to do that for me and it usually happens really organically too. So other people tag their friends and we don't have to think about that stuff anymore. So that's kind of nice and it's a great way to create engagement. You can see these numbers just with the album. This is just the one time that I post the homecoming album and there were a couple say, oh, Miss Queen is in there. Um, Every time I added new pictures to it was another post, so this was just one of them. But just in one post of this, 8,556 people reached. So, you know, this is because of the engagement that we have on it, the likes, the comments, the shares. You know, those sort of things happen very quickly, and they continue over time, actually. I still see people tagging stuff in commencement and in homecoming. So these are the things that can continue kind of your growth engagement, too. Crowdsourcing is always easy. Instead of me going out and taking a million spring pictures or fall pictures, I let our students do it for us and our faculty and staff. And they really know how to tag things now. It's easy. You don't have to explain things to people. You just say, tag your pictures, and that's it. And you can really easily collect stuff that people enjoy looking at. Know your audience. I know that 65%, this is from the whole year, 65% of my audience is female. So a lot of the stuff that you see is directed towards females. Pictures, that's one reason pictures are so big. Females love pictures. We'll sit and look through somebody's pictures for hours that we barely even know just because we love that kind of thing. We want to know them. We want to understand it. And so we want the emotions and the feelings. So a lot of the stuff that I do is really directed at females, even though I try to mix in the males too a lot. Um, but you got to understand that that's your audience and that's who you're trying to reach. Holidays and seasons are huge. I don't know why. I've never understood it. I hate, I'm one of those people that hates talking about the weather and about the seasons. And, but people love this stuff and they will engage with it so quickly and so easily. This fall picture, Jeremy, you remember when you made fun of me for taking this picture? Yeah, I was walking up to Sparks Hall and I was like, oh, the trees are so pretty. And Jeremy was walking behind me and he was like, fall, y'all. <laughs> and he was laughing at me for taking this. But this was one of our highest engagement points all year. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, um, weather, trees, flowers, you name it. We've got an easy landscape here. The campus is beautiful. It's easy to capture it. Um, people love looking at it, love sharing, and they, they attach to that. So things like that just make a lot of sense. And like contests. 
when I do something now, I try to have people tell us their story. And then if they share it with their friends, they'll get likes. And that's how they win. So a lot of that is really working for me. And as you can see at the bottom there, there's 94 shares on this picture. So that means people are sharing it and asking their friends to come back to that post. So there's some people that we may not already have connected to our page. Um, it really tries to pull people in and, and engage at the same time. Um, I'll go ahead and run through Twitter real quick and then we can open it up because I, I want to make sure we have plenty of time. But Twitter's real simple. Follow your followers. To grow it, you have to follow people. They love it. They want to know that you're connected to them and that you're interested in them as much as they are interested in you. That's something that we really can't do on Facebook, so this is why it's a different audience. It's a different, there's different needs there. So I literally have to go through, see the people that are following me, and just click through and follow everybody. And I know once in a while, there'll be like an advertisement in there, like that top one I probably shouldn't have even followed. I don't even know what that is. Um, but I'll, I try to kind of leave those out, but a lot of times I don't have time to really look through a lot of them. So I'm just going through and I'm clicking and I'm following people. It makes them happy. It's fine. It doesn't hurt me any. So follow your followers is a big one. Valuable content is obviously going to grow your account very easily. If people see a value in it, they're going to like it. So they're going to want to share it. They're going to want to use it. They're going to want to read it. And links, all the research that I read right now, and our analytics actually line up with this, is that people are clicking on links through Twitter. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to see. So even though they're, it doesn't totally make sense to me because I view Twitter as people just running through tweet after tweet after tweet, and they're just looking at stuff so fast. But the, all of the numbers say that people like links. And I don't totally understand that, but I, I have to go with what the analytics say and what um, people who are looking at this all the time say, and that's what they say to do. So our analytics do line up with that. Look for people related to your industry. It seems like a given, but a lot of times people forget to do that. Um, go through Twitter and find people who have the keywords that fit into what you do. And then consistent keyword searches is kind of the same thing. If you have some keywords that you that run around what you do or what you're interested in or what you're pushing out, use those keywords and those hashtags to find the right people and follow them. Hashtags is huge. People that um, don't understand hashtags are really missing out on Twitter because the use of hashtags, even though they're funny and they're goofy and they're kind of a fun thing too, there's also really a business use for them. And that is to connect people to each other. That's the whole point of Twitter. So if you're not searching for hashtags and finding those people, then you're really missing a, a landscape of users there for you. And then the same thing as Facebook, advertise offline. Don't forget to put your, face, or your Twitter and Facebook and everything else on your um, cards that you're handing out, or on your posters that you're printing out, or anything that you're doing traditionally. Don't forget to add your social media to it. Engagement, continue to add content. Don't go stale. Always remember that Twitter, you can get away with a lot more content pushing you out at the same time than you can with Facebook. People won't handle it on Facebook, but on Twitter, they will watch it, they will engage, and they will stay connected to you. Hashtag campaigns, it's the same idea. I keep pushing campaigns, campaigns, campaigns. But that's really where the meat of social media is. And hashtag campaigns are a great thing. Now that Facebook has added them, it's made a lot of things easier for us as marketers to go across all the different platforms. The problem with Facebook is that their content has to be public for you to be able to see it in your hashtags, in your hashtag searches. So if their posts is towards you using a hashtag. If they're not public, you're not going to see it. And that's the only problem that we have right now. Most people have their Twitter profiles public. Um, it's, it's the same thing with Twitter, but most people don't hide their Twitter feeds or um, their content. So uh, it's a lot harder to find stuff on Facebook. Hopefully there'll be something that changes with that in the future. Tweet with a call to action. If you have something that you want them to do, um, if we're seeing that the numbers are that people want to click on links, have a call to action, ask them to do something, um, and make it worth your while. And respond in keyword searches. 
I have, these are just a portion of some of the keyword searches that I do daily, if not hourly, sometimes constantly. Um, I have to go through and look for these tweets and if there are people that are tweeting using these hashtags or other keywords that I have, I let them know that we are there, whether they know it or not, whether they're talking to us or not. A lot of times I respond to things that were not meant um, for me to respond to not necessarily negatively, but just they didn't know we were there. So I say, hey, great that you're coming to Murray State. You know, love that you posted your picture of your um, admissions packet or whatever it may be. You know, those are the things that help us grow and also get people to engage with us. And engaging topics not about you necessarily. Sometimes I think that there are, we have the ability to jump in on conversations that weren't necessarily made for us or, or about us. Um, I told Loretta that they have an opportunity, I have her on my brain because I just met with her, but they have an opportunity from the RBIC to talk about things that have nothing to do with Murray State or specifically what they're doing in that office. There's a lot of other topics you might be involved with. Telecom is a big one. Um, you guys can talk about the industry a lot. You know, our HR, maybe there's some things that you guys can kind of jump in on, on just statistics worldwide or nationwide about human resources. So. You just never know what's going to help you out in your cause. Reply to all mentions. I try to do this as much as possible, and I work really hard at this, actually, that I make sure I reply and try to reply in a timely manner. Now, there are times at night that I shut it off, and in the morning I wish I would have responded um, easily you know, or quickly. Um, but there are a lot of times that you can respond pretty quickly and that's why I keep that running on my phone even though it's annoying, it's horribly annoying to have tweets on my phone constantly popping up um, that I can at least run through real quick, see that there's nothing that needs to be answered right away and then remember that I got to go back to that in the next hour and respond to these people. So reply as much as you can possible. And the same thing as Facebook, respond to trends, Throwback Thursday or any of those trends that are happening right now. I've even, I'm trying, I'm considering, I guess, trying to respond to the Man Crush Mondays and Woman Crush Wednesdays right now. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with that. Huh? On Mondays and Wednesdays, people usually post their pictures of people that they adore. On Mondays, men. On Wednesdays, women. And they're usually cute, you know, and they put MCM and WCM, WCW, WCW. So, you know, things like that are easy to jump in on. Another thing is to watch trending topics on Twitter. I used to do this a lot, and I haven't done it lately. We've just been too crowded with information. But um, tr just trending topics or trending hashtags. Uh, during basketball season a couple years ago, I started doing tweets that had to do with Murray State basketball, but they were trending um, hashtags. So it wouldn't have anything to do with us. And I would say, well, Dunker says blah, 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 and use that hashtag. And that created a lot of just fun tweets and interaction and stuff. So especially when I knew the audience was paying attention, if it was right after a basketball game or right after a win when everybody's on Twitter and they're talking about it, I would try to throw in a trend in there and just, you know, and then you show up in whatever um, search that people are doing of that trend. So that helps your engagement as well. That's really all I have. So I know that was really super fast, but I wanna hear from you guys. And so first let me ask, what, what things on Facebook are you all doing to grow your audiences? And I'm gonna take some notes too. Anybody wanna share? Well, one of the things that, you know, I think we've talked about this at the last meeting, but we've got um, our own set of recruiters for the College of Ed. Well, yesterday they went out to Marshall County High School and they had called Marshall County Day. And so they took our Facebook page address and they had the kids get out their phone right there and like us and then follow us on Twitter. And so while I was sitting in senior breakfast, tweeting pictures, then I started getting, you know, I'm like, holy cow, we've got 10 new followers in the last five minutes, you know, so, I mean, that face-to-face -face works. Mm -hmm. And 
the one thing that I'm looking at now is we've hit the 400 mark on our Facebook page, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I mean, we haven't really started promoting it until just a few months ago. And so I'm looking at maybe doing a like contest to bump us up to that milestone of 500 and, you know, trying to get that number up there, help us get to 500 or, help, you know, same thing with Twitter, yeah. um, doing something like that. But I think that, that engagement person to person is probably one of the most successful things that we've done. And then the most random pictures. You, we've gotten a lot of likes just out of just random, what we would think would not be popular, ends up being the most popular pictures, you know, when I start looking at our insights. Yeah. Our pictures from women in telecom golf day are the most popular things. Really? Because women. We have all boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> well, <most of> <laughs> On the, when you were at Marshall County and asked them to do that, did you bait them? Did you give them anything if they did it? No. Or just, just ask no, them? No, the recruiters went out and they said, okay, so do you want to keep up with what's happening with the College of Ed? And, you know, you're going to be coming, you know, because they're out there recruiting. So they just got us, they just put our, our uh, told them, get your phones out, you know, which they think it's kind of, they're like, what? Get our phones out? You know, no, get your phones out and let's, you know, follow us on Facebook. We have not done any kind of incentive at all. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. No incentives. I, we've thought about it. I thought, well, maybe we could do some swag to give away to do, because we've not ever done a giveaway, and do some swag for, uh, to hit the 500 mark or whatever mark that we want to hit. I'm still debating on whether I want to do that because I like the organic just getting, you know, yeah. pictures well, and... With us, we, we have done like contests in the past, and what we have given out, I mean, we're TSM, have mm -hmm. been computer-type prizes so that you're not going to like it to win something unless you're interested in the prize. Right. And if you're interested in the prize, then you're likely going to be interested in following our page mm -hmm. as well. And the people that I have noticed that had signed up or liked the page for the prize are some of our more active people. Yeah. So I think that if you do the like and win, it's it's dependent on what the win is, I guess. That's exactly right. Can you hear well, Jeremy? Just talk loud, because y'all don't have microphones, so. Anybody else have any thoughts on Facebook growth? Last year in in athletics, we did a, um, a light contest that ultimately turned into a competition between another school in our conference. And the idea, um, the, I got the idea because we have reached about 8,000 or so followers or fans on, our, on the athletics Facebook page, and I wanted to reach 10,000, and it was, it was during the summer months, I think it was started in June. And I want to reach 10,000 before the start of school. So the the contest that I did, the like promotion that we did, was simply um, you know help like our page, spread the word to your friends and, and other racers um, around. And once we reach 10,000, then we'll unveil our fall posters for for that particular year. Well, Eastern Kentucky got wind of that, and they saw that, um, and I in turn saw a tweet pertaining to what they mentioned on their Twitter account saying, hey, they were talking to their, their Twitter fans and their Facebook fans saying, hey, Murray State's trying to reach 10,000 fans. And they had, they were close, they had about seven or 8,000 as well. And they, on, on their page, they said, hey, let's try to get 10,000 before they do. So I was like, game on. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, we reached 10,000 fans within a couple couple months. Um, it, it wasn't, it didn't take hard for Racer Nation to come together especially once they saw that another school was trying to trying to beat us. Um, and, and the incentive was, well, what are the posters going to look like, you know, building that suspense mm -hmm. for it. Um, and, and that was the one time that we kind of did a light promotion and it went over really well. Now we're more in, uh, I've done more in engaging type things on Facebook in particular, um, such as, you know, tell us about your weekend, especially during those slow times. Um, the other day I asked our fans, since it was, Protect the serve day at our last football game, asked our fans to share their stories about any loved ones that they had in the military. And we had a few people respond to that. And, 
and post pictures and things. So those are some of the things that the things that we did, and we're starting to see um, a lot of just organic growth as well. Every day that I go to our page, there's a couple more people that are that are liking our page. And the thing that I've done the last couple of years is every time we reach a milestone as far as numbers, I create a I have a, a photo cover a cover page created for that number. So when we reached 10,000, we did a thanks fans for helping us reach 10,000. Now that we're close to 12,000, we have one that says um, over 11,500 strong, thank you, Race Nation, or something like that. And, and that in turn allows our fans to, to make those cover pages their own as well. Um, one of the other cover pages I think that's pretty popular is just a basic one that has an arrow pointing to the profile box and says, you know, I'm a racer and has our hashtag and we encourage people to, to download that cover page to show their, their school spirit. Yeah, so. Anybody else want to share? <clears throat> How about Facebook engagement? We've already touched on a few things, but anybody have a, a good story or example lately of something that's worked for Facebook engagement? No? Okay, let's move on to Twitter then. Anybody, I get a lot of questions about Twitter from everybody. Um, I think that's what everyone on campus is most curious about um, and hasn't quite grasped yet as far as using it for marketing. A lot of people are starting to. It's, it's starting to become more familiar um, with everybody, but I, I do feel like most of my questions come from Twitter, even though we don't have that many accounts across campus yet. So, at least real accounts. We have a lot of accounts on <laughs> campus that are not real accounts that we're working on. So, um, anybody have any stories of failures or successes for Twitter growth or engagement? Well, I have a question. Demographics. Sure. Is there mm -hmm. a way to get demographics of who your followers are? No. Yes and no. You have to pay for it. Okay. Not free. There's not. I use um, I use Sprout Social. I think I told you all that. SproutSocial.com, which is a, an, an analytics and also posting and everything else um, service. I used the free trial for a month and then I started using it immediately after because there was enough information on there I could not get myself. Um, one of those is Twitter Analytics, and it is extremely helpful. If, well, I can't look at analytics on my iPad. So I say I could show you all, but um, it gives me the same demographic information and the same analytic information that I get for Facebook. So yes, it is out there, but you have to pay for it. And that's simply because Twitter makes them pay for it. So. Um, they don't allow anybody else into their their stuff unless they're paying for it. So um, there are analytics on Twitter that we'll touch on in our next session, which is the basic analytics that we're going to talk about. And there are there is a way to cheat and kind of get into Twitter analytics as far as post and um, um, engagement, I guess. And all you have to do on that is you have to act like you're going to build an ad for Twitter. There's a way to go into Twitter for Business and say, yes, I'm going to do ads. And then it'll kind of sign you up for ads under that account. And from that point on, you have a little link over there that takes you to Twitter for Business. And if you click on that, there's a way to go to Analytics. So it will show you some very, very basic analytics for your Twitter account. But that is all you can get for free. Um, so you have to pay a third-party service to get those. So yeah, you could try it. You should try Sprout, the free 30-month, 30 30 30-day, 30-month, 30 that would be awesome, 30-day yeah. yeah. trial and see if you like it. Because it's the same, that little chart that I showed you of the demographics for Facebook, I have the same thing. It puts it all in a nice pretty charts and lets you know what you got on there. Can't get it for anything else. I'd love to have it for Pinterest, but... They're not there yet. So. Well, to your engagement question, the thing on Twitter in particular that was the most successful for us, at least in my opinion, was when we had our conference and had a hashtag for the conference. You know, ask your question. If you have a question, you don't raise your hand. 
or if you're watching the live stream, right, uh, you know, ask it and use the hashtag. And I, people did. I know that pe some of the people that asked the question were online, and I, I know some of the people that asked the question were uh, there in person. And we also got new followers, and we got conversation built around the conference. So it worked. I actually had other organizations make the comment that we had thought about that, but was afraid that it wouldn't be effective or have too much that we wouldn't be able to keep up with. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's not that much. I mean, when you only have 100 people there, you're not going to get mm -hmm. you know, another 60, 70, 80 watching online. You're not going to get that much action. Yeah. Uh, but it was very effective. And you need to watch the engagement on that, too. Mm -hmm when you get, because we did that with a conference back in the summer. And, you know, a lot of times it made my job easy because I could sit back. And so the participants were really creating the conversation mm -hmm. and going back and forth and they were sharing and retweeting and, you know, replying. And so it was really neat to watch that. And I follow several people within the Kentucky Department of Ed. Almost every night they do a uh, what's called Ed Chat, Kentucky Ed mm -hmm. Chat, and so they do a chat, and they have you know, and I mean it's for about a, you know forty five minutes to an hour, and they'll do you know chat. So there's a lot of different things that you can do within that. But the conference, I love that. It it really worked out well for us too. Mm -hmm. Any event, conference, a something that you have people connected to, if you throw a hashtag out there, people understand it now. Um, a lot of people are afraid to do that because they don't think their audience understands what it's for and they don't realize most people are already on Twitter, they're already using it, they're savvy to it, they understand having that back channel. Um, this conference that I went to two weeks or a week ago, I guess, last week actually, um, in Boston, they had a Twitter hashtag for the conference but nobody was really helping the engagement along so there were there were tweets and there were things that were happening um, between the users but it did take a little bit of coaxing to get people to really talk a lot um, but a lot of people you know you had your key people that were in sessions and they were giving out quotes and things that were happening in those sessions and pictures and all that but I actually had a girl come up to me and say this is the first conference that I've been to that there hasn't been a, a back-end conversation going on on Twitter. And she was disappointed with that because we, I think we have gotten to that point where we kind of rely on those things. Um, I leave a conference now and I want to go back through those tweets and I want to jot down ideas and I want to look at pictures and figure out things that I missed. And, you know, those are the, the kind of things that are, people are savvy to now. So, you know, don't be afraid to use that in any way that you can. And that can be over a longer period of time, too. Don't think that it's just for a one-day event or a weekend or whatever it may be. You know, create something that is a topic about what you're doing and continue with it and use it over a longer period of time. And I think that's okay. You know, you're probably never going to have a hashtag like, like Racer Nation, that everybody that was created by the users, it's it's going to continue on. Um, but at the same time, you can push that. It, it all goes with how well you push it. So you have to be the one to market it, to push it, and say it's there. Now use it and engage with it. Okay, anybody else? But I think that's a good point, though, that you have to have somebody. They're just putting it on the slide or putting it on the front of the of the pamphlet or brochure mm -hmm. isn't enough that you, you know, we stood up there and reminded people, don't forget, it. you can ask your questions using the hashtag. Yeah. We planted people <laughs> with ours. I, I mean, they were already attending. Um, and I knew that they were big, you know, tweeters. And so I just pulled them aside and I said, can you help us get this off the ground and help get, you know, stimulate the conversation? And once I just, you know, talked to two or three different people, then it just took off, mm -hmm. you know, and then I didn't really have to worry about it. They, they went off on their own and, 
took it to a whole other level that I wasn't expecting. So that that helped a lot, just kind of, you know, especially if it's the first time you're doing that. Mm -hmm. The other thing about engagement on Twitter um, that I've been a part of, not so much from a, from an athletics department standpoint, but from a personal Twitter account, is um, in participating in Twitter chats um, via the hashtag. All it is is a hashtag that you basically have conversations with people within your industry. Um, I participated in probably three or four Twitter chats over the course of a month. Uh, with different people in my industry, whether it's ticketing or or marketing or, or other things, um, host these chats and post questions for an hour. A lot of them are, or most of most of them are all just an hour long. And every time you, you use a hashtag, you know, people ask post questions and you answer those questions through the Twitterverse. And what I've seen is not only are you get or not only do I get valuable information from others, uh, other experts in my industry, but um, it also grows, you know, grows that industry even more. Um, and, and it's kind of one of those things that once you're involved, you want to stay involved with it, and it helps you become an expert on on your particular topic or on something that that, that you're involved in. Um, so Twitter chats are the are, are a way to go. Um, for some people, for your followers, it may be a little annoying because all your tweets are about something that they <laughs> they may not have any idea about. Um, some people, I, I know I post, you know, for all my Twitter followers here in 10 minutes, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a, a Twitter chat, sorry, not sorry, you know, <laughs> and it's just one of those things, but people across the industry see, you know, participate in that Twitter chat and see that hashtag, and before you know it, you're developing relationships and learning more. Yeah, I do the same thing, and I really enjoy it. I learn a lot from them, and our, our group, of course, we're all social media people, but our group, they will then take the conversation that we had over Twitter and put it into a Storify. And from there, I just take that Storify and print it, and I go through and highlight the things that, I know this is nerdy, but I go through and highlight the things that I like <laughs> <laughs> and circle things and make notes, you know, because I have the whole conversation of an hour from all of these schools put into one place and they're all sharing information. So that may be something that you all could adapt to your strategies. Um, maybe something about the industry or career services or maybe an alum from TSM who is on Twitter and you say, hey, we're going to have a Twitter chat with um, Forrest Carver from Germany and uh, you know, be here in an hour and we're going to ask him different questions and you guys have the opportunity to ask different questions or an alum from COE or whatever it may be. And you may be, be able to adapt that to your strategies as well. Um, so that's a, a great idea. We've got a few minutes left. If anybody has any other thoughts or questions or... Well, I'm glad to hear you say something about um, the woman crush... With, you know, <laughs> Man Crush Monday, to, because I've wanted to do something like that, and, and hearing you talk, I think what we could do is, uh, for academic side, mm -hmm. I think it's a good opportunity for us to be able to spotlight our faculty I mean, and yeah. our staff, so we can go in and snap a picture of them and say, this is our Man Crush Monday. Yeah, <laughs> I love and, it. Yeah, do something like that. I'm glad to hear you say that, because I've been wanting to... Yeah, try to tie that in somehow and make it fun. I think that's a great idea. As soon as you said that you were thinking on that, I, that's what popped into my head was <laughs> our faculty members and yeah. man crush and woman crush. <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, especially when you have some really popular faculty, that would be a lot of fun uh -huh. to do that. They, yep. they would think it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think so too. And it may be better coming from like a department instead of me yeah. doing that. So. Yeah, y'all run with those trends. They're so much fun. And you just have to think how to angle it towards Murray State and still kind of, you know, it's, it's more of a spirit thing, but at the same time you can really kind of get a message in there um, of something that's important to you. So we've done that several times and it works really well. And it resonates with current students and prospective students. I see a lot of prospective students, anytime that we do anything like that, say, this is so cool, look what Murray State did. 
this is another reason I want to go to Murray State, you know, those kind of things. And I jump on those as quick as I can when I see those kind of tweets because I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I'll be kind of smart alecky about it. Like, yeah, that, you know, that's how we roll or whatever it may be um, because that really catches their attention. So, Especially if they've just been admitted. I've watched your tweets when they say, yay, you know, they got a picture uh-huh. of a letter. So that's been really fun to yeah. watch and the excitement build for them, you know, yeah. because they're only three more months or four more months to, yeah. you know, I go to Murray State. So. They, they run the, that was the reason I did the countdown to Great Beginnings because students were already doing that. Mm-hmm. And so I really wanted to jump in. I was just seeing this huge amount of students that were saying, I've got, ten, I've got two more months or I've got three more months. And I thought, you know, if they're going to count down, we might as well count down. And I had the best engagement with that countdown on Twitter and Facebook. Um, so, I mean, on Instagram and Facebook. So uh, that was, you know, when you see, I try to watch for what people are already talking about. And if they're talking about or doing something already, they're going to do it with you too. So that's kind of one of my running themes that I have in my head, I guess, of, you know, when they, when I hear them all doing the same thing, it's time to jump in on that. So take advantage of it. Anybody else? All right. Well, I appreciate you all coming today. If you wouldn't mind on your way out, if you would um, put your name and your office on here, because we want to thank everybody that's been coming to these and I will probably post this video for everybody so that we can all take notes from it and I will keep you all updated thanks I appreciate it